Yes, a 30-foot cruiser sold on eBay for $335 with a working engine. Fixing up an old boat to make it seaworthy for coastal sailing. This is not a complete guide, but a few notes on how I did it to some old boats of mine to use for coastal cruising, not crossing oceans. I'm discussing here 30-year-old boats, plus or minus 26 to 36 overall, and bid on eBay auction uh, or Craigslist from about 1500 to under $10,000. The engine is a big item. For diesel engines like Yanmar, Beta, Perkins and Volvo, you can get spares. And universal gas, petrol engines, have a keen following and upgraded to electronic ignition can be reliable. A badly maintained engine with poor compression, difficult starting, uh, water in the oil, smoking injectors, will cost thousands to repair, so are best to be avoided. A well-maintained diesel will be good for many thousands of hours, but common problems with old engines are leaking fuel lines, hoses, exhaust elbows, and dirty or leaking fuel tanks. Modern biodiesel seems to degrade old fuel lines. I replaced fuel lines for $150 where the shop cut off the old crimp fittings and brazed new couplings onto the old banjos. Old leaky water hoses can often be replaced by new auto hoses trimmed to fit. Dirty fuel is the death of engines. The problem may not be apparent until the yacht is in heavy weather, stirring up the crud in the bottom of the old tank. The tank can be removed and steam cleaned and the fuel polished clean. However, the hassle of removing the old tank to clean it may show up some other problems, leaks and damage to the boat. So in the past I bought a new plastic tank and installed it in a locker for about $100. Several plastic jerry cans, yellow for diesel, red for gasoline, make up the required capacity to travel the 400 miles between fuel stops on the Mississippi, that section of the Great Loop. I changed the engine oil and filter as a matter of course, so I'm confident of a starting point. I also changed the raw water impeller and keep the old one as a spare. The same goes for the fan belt. Batteries will almost certainly have to be replaced. The engine cranking battery can be a regular auto type, but the house batteries are better to be a pair of 6 volt golf cart deep cycle batteries for about $180. If the motor has not been run for some time, the starter motor and alternator may be rusted up. Stripping them and cleaning off the rust may well get them going again. It did for me. A lifting bracket on the transom to take the dinghy outboard is a good insurance against main engine failure. It is surprising how well a 4 horsepower outboard can push a 32 foot yacht in flat conditions. Talking of insurance, a hundred dollar portable generator is useful to have on board if you flatten your batteries by mistake. Old boats had solid hulls, and while osmosis may cause ugly blisters, uh, I've never heard of a boat sinking from osmosis. A hull to deck joint may leak due to heavy contact, and there is little that can be done to uh, fix it easily. You just have to live with the leak. Decks are often made of sandwich construction to save weight. Again, I've never heard of a boat sinking due to soft decks. The irritating thing is that items bolted through the deck can leak due to the balsa coil losing rigidity and loosening the fastenings. The solution is to remove the fitting, excavate the coil with a bent nail in a drill, fill with epoxy, fit a backing pad to spread the load, then re-drill the holes and bolt the fitting back up. The big problem with this method is on some boats is gaining access to the underside of the deck. 
Another common source of deck leaks is where the mast passes through the deck. A mast boot made of wide self-amalgamating tape wrapped round solves this. Opening hatches usually leak because the seal is degraded. Fitting new seals is not that expensive. Crazed windows don't worry me, so long as they let the light in and keep the water out. Leaking fixed windows are better bedded on butyl tape, which never dries solid, so allowing movement between the rigid frame and glass of the window and the relatively flexible deck. Boats have sunk from faulty seacocks. They must work and be made from good quality bronze or glass fibre reinforced plastic. Connect with good quality hose and double up stainless hose clips. Good seacocks are expensive, but inferior products should not be considered in this case. Keels are often bolted to the hull and a heavy grounding can cause leaks. Getting to the keel bolts on the inside can be the biggest problem, but lifting the hull up to allow access for cleaning and rebedding the joint is not a huge task. If you have wheel steering, check the integrity of the links, cables and pulleys below deck. Out of sight can be out of mind. Check for excessive play in the rudder. Sails and rig. A stitch in time saves nine is true for sails. If you can't borrow a heavy duty sewing machine then it will pay to have a sailmaker check out your canvas. PTFE spray to the luff groove can help the sail hoisting and lowering. Sticking roller furling gear can often be cured by increasing the forestay tension with a few turns on the backstay or adjusting the tension on the luff. Wash out the salt in the furling drum and the top swivel. Check the standing rigging for broken wires and worn clevis pins. Mouse all turnbuckles and rigging screws. Remember that shackles have a very low breaking strain compared to similar size 1x19 wire and should not be used in standing rigging. If you plan to insure your boat all risks, the company may insist on replacement of the standing rigging if you cannot prove it is at least less than 10 years old. Put all the running rigging in a washing machine to wash out the salt and dirt. It can make rope much more supple. Strip and clean in diesel and grease all winches. Take photos as you strip them so you can see how they go back together. Wash salt out of clutches, cam cleats and blocks. Dock lines and fenders. Check you have lines for all four corners plus midship lines, both sides. That can also be used as springs. Also, a couple of long lines for odd occasions. Old auto tyres make good shock absorbers when integrated into dock lines. Many fenders can be pumped up with a soccer ball adapter. If they look tatty, they can be smartened up with socks. A big ball fender is very useful, though difficult to stow. A six foot length of inch by six timber makes a good fender board when you have to lay alongside piles or concrete. Ground tackle. Strip clean and grease the anchor windlass if you have one. They are in a very exposed position and catch a lot of salt water. Check the anchor chain and anchor road and pull on them with the car to check integrity. Use the biggest shackle that will fit the chain and mouse it. Have at least two anchors on board with chain or line to suit and go oversize rather than undersize. I bought a £20 anchor, chain and road on Craigslist for under $50. If you have an all chain anchor line, that's the best. Make sure the bitter end is made fast to the boat with a short length of line that can be cut in an emergency. Safety gear. Life jackets for all on board plus at least two lifelines. 
a throwable flotation cushion, though who throws it when single-handed, I don't know. A first aid kit. I replace all fire extinguishers as a matter of course. The same with flares. Buy new ones and keep the old ones for spares. I found flares work many years after their expiry date. Make sure propane bottles can leak over the side and not into the bilge. I prefer to store petrol jerry cans on deck and not in lockers for the same reason. Navigation. Compass, charts and echo sounder as a minimum. If you have to buy an old GPS map with the boat, then you may not be able to get charts for it uh, and you may have to then buy a new model. Small GPS maps can be bought from $300 up and are adequate. Other instruments are nice to have but not essential. An autopilot, if you sail solo, uh, is the exception. General. I found Dollar Store Lavatory Bowl Cleaner good for cleaning dirt off fiberglass. It's based on hydrochloric acid, so it's not stuff to get in your eyes or delicate skin, but it certainly shifts the muck. Stubborn stains, like old masking tape residue, can be removed with denatured alcohol, the same as used in stoves. You may notice that I haven't mentioned air conditioning, generators, water makers, solar panels, painting, varnishing, radar, bunk cushions, and the many other items that are on a modern yacht that don't come under the heading seaworthy in my book. Some of you may differ. I may have missed some items. A 28-foot boat, $2,000 yacht on eBay, plus a 1,000 or so of spares and maintenance, plus a fortnight's work, can give one or two people a lot of adventure. A throwable flotation, a throwable flotation cushion, though who flo <laughs> a throwable flotation cushion, though who throws it when single-handed, I don't know.